We're returning to chapter 7, the energy equation, to discuss two sections now. These are very short, so it shouldn't take us very long. Um, but we're going to discuss sections uh, 7.4 and 7.5, uh, the, the uh, power equation and also what mechanical efficiency is. Both of these are very quick and easy concepts, so I think we'll be able to get through them pretty quickly. Let me see if I can scroll down through here to 7.4, and we will start with that uh, particular section right here. A couple of things I want to write out. Um, first of all, in general, the power is um, normally um, written as um, power is normally written as m dot g h, or we can um, use the definitions. Excuse me, use the definitions of the um, of the uh, of the the volume flow rate versus the mass flow rate, and we can get gamma q of h. Now, um, H is an altitude, but of course, when we talk about pump and turbine, the rate of work done by a pump, this is a power. The rate of work is a power. And we can write this now as either um, M dot G H, the head of the pump, or gamma Q head of the pump, and similarly for the turbine, the rate of work of the turbine, we can write down a similar equation for that. H sub t now, gamma q h sub t. So um, we, you can see that the, uh, this equation is right here, and um, we have a way of uh, kind of quantifying these, uh, the, both the, uh, the turbine and the the pump, the rate of work done by these, by each of these, or, um, or, the, or the rate of work done by the fluid to give us energy back and power back by the turbine. So um, these are just a couple of equations that, uh, that we've seen before for rectilinear motion or linear motion. Um, it's just the force times the velocity. We talked about that at the beginning of this chapter. And also, uh, if we have rotational energy, it's just a torque divided by the angular velocity. So um, there's a couple of, of uh, questions here, uh, examples in the book related to um, the uh, determining the power required um, in certain situations. And so um, section 7.5 now is on mechanical efficiency and why are pumps not 100% efficient? Uh, what processes are occurring to make the efficiency less than 100%? And the book mentions a couple of them. Um, mechanical friction, that makes sense to us. Um, we have some intuition about that, that there's always going to be friction in the parts of a pump or a turbine. It also mentions uh, viscous uh, dissipation. And this is different than the viscous dissipation in the head loss. This is going to be any viscous dissipation within a pump or a turbine. And then also just general leakage. Um, and that might be leakage of, of fluid or even energy through seals um, and, uh, and joints and any other sort of uh, places where you can have uh, um, either fluid liquid leakage or energy leakage. So these are some of the, the things that reduce the efficiency. Uh, we know from the um, conservation of energy that these conversions of energy are never 100% efficient and perfect. So we know we, we're going to have losses. So mechanical efficiency is defined as the rate of power output to power input. So if we write this another way, the power output is going to be um, the efficiency factor times the power input. And we can see that since this is always uh, less than 100%, basically less than 1 or 100%, that um, the power output will always be less than the power input. 
So power out is going to be less than power in, which also makes physical sense to us. So we can look at a couple of examples here, um, as done in the book. Uh, we um, can basically calculate the, um, the efficiency of the electric motor. Um, we know uh, that we have a thousand um, watts or joules per second going into the electric motor and we have um, that's the input and we have 750 coming out so we can calculate the efficiency I'm going to do that on a separate sheet of paper here so the uh, the uh, the eta of the motor is going to be equal to 750 joules per second over a thousand joules per second or watts and so the efficiency of that is 0.75 or 75 percent. Now if we go back and we look at the the efficiency of the pump we've got 750 or 450 over 750 you can see that power in is uh, 750 power out is is 450 so the pump itself equals 450 and I'm just going to write watts now it's easier to write um, and that turns out to be 60% or 0.6 and if you combine both of these together now to to get the motor uh, plus the pump and we know that the combination of those has 450 going out and a thousand going in and so the total efficiency is going to be 45% of those together. So these are, these are pretty easy things to calculate. It makes intuitive sense to us um, that there's a loss at each, um, at each uh, uh, device, basically, within the, uh, within the system. Now, we can also look at a similar situation where we have a wind turbine. So we have some moving air that's coming in. It's going into a, a turbine. There's a, quite a heavy loss in the wind turbine, 36% um, there. Um, and then the electric generator is actually quite efficient. Um, and, uh, and that goes uh, to the electric grid. So let's just do a quick calculation here. So the, uh, the uh, eta of the turbine, I'll just call it T, is going to be uh, only 36% because you've got uh, for every watt, uh, for every kilowatt, per thousand watts of energy, air energy, basically kinetic energy hitting the turbines, we only get 360 watts. That's 36%. Uh, but the generator, I'll just say G for generator, the electric generator, is uh, 324 watts divided by 360 watts. So electric generators are quite efficient. That's a 90% efficient efficiency. And the combination, again, of eta T the generator uh, the turbine plus the generator is going to be only 324 watts over uh, over a thousand the combination of both and so we get uh, obviously up we get 32 um, percent 32 and a half percent basically. Um, so um, those are pretty easy to deal with. Um, Remember these equations. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, the the actual pump um, power that comes out of a pump is going to be this efficiency factor times uh, really the the power that is supplied to the pump shaft. So this this eta uh, sub pump is going to be the the uh, the reduction in efficiency due to that particular pump, and similarly for a turbine. Um, and there are a couple of examples showing um, how you would apply these efficiencies in a particular problem. Example 7.4 is a good example. Okay, that's it for power and mechanical efficiency.